Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. This is our part 7 of our DP900 real exam question series. Have you missed to watch the earlier 6 parts? Then the link for the entire playlist is now flashing in the i button on the top right corner and in the description box below. Don't miss these parts as many of the concepts are discussed in detail. So let's begin. So let's begin our part 7 with question number 71. The question says your company is designing a database that will contain session data for a website. The data will include notification, personalization, attributes and products that are added to a shopping cart. Which type of data store will provide low latency to retrieve the data? Keep in mind the keywords here are notification personalization attributes and product that are added to a shopping cart. Keeping these keywords in mind, the answer for this question would be columnar database or columnar data. So if I give you more information about columnar data, so columnar data family is low latency data store type. Examples for these kind of uh, database are recommendations, personalization, sensor data, telemetry, messaging, social media analytics, web analytics, activity monitoring, weather and other time series data. So if in the question you see any of these examples, then you know the answer for that will be columnar data. I hope that makes it clear to you. Just keep these uh, keywords in mind when answering these kind of questions. Moving on, we have question number 72. A question number 72 asks you to complete the sentence. So the uh, input given is batch workload and then you have to select out of these four options given. The first option is process data in memory row by row or collect and process data at most once a day or process data as a new data is received in real time or collect data and process the data when a condition is met. As we have discussed it in our previous videos as well, batch workloads are the workloads which process the data in a chunk when a condition is met. Thus, the answer for the same is the last one, which is collect data and process the data when a condition is met. Now let's start with our question number 73. It asks, three characteristics of an online transaction processing OLTP workload. We have discussed this many times that the OLTP is a normalized database which is heavy on write because it's a transactional based database and then it's schema on write. Why? Because you have already designed and decided the schema before you actually start using a OLTP based database. So the correct answers for this question are heavy writes and moderate reads, schema on write and normalized data. Giving you a context, if this question would have been asking about OLAP, which is online transaction analytic processing, then the answer would change. Then the answer would be denormalized data, heavy uh, or light writes and heavy reads and schema on read. So keep this in mind when you are asking, uh, answering the question, keep that in mind. Is it a OLTP or is it a OLAP based question? Moving on to our question number 74. The question asks you which two activities can be performed entirely by using Microsoft Power BI service without relying on Power BI desktop. Now, uh, looking at the option, the correct answer for this question are a report and a dashboard creation and the data acquisition and preparation. So other two options actually require you to have Power BI desktop. However, the option A and D can be performed by only using Microsoft Power BI. Let's move to our question number 75. 
Our question number 75 is a yes and no. So you are given some statements. Let's look at them one by one. So first statement says processing salary payment once a month is an example of a batch workload. So now that we have discussed this many times, I think you are already in a position to answer this. So batch workload, this is the key word here. When are we processing the data? We are processing the salary once a month. So we are processing a big chunk of a data. Thus, it definitely is a batch workload. So the answer is yes. Then we have second statement which says a wind turbine sends 50 sensor readings per second. Is an example of streaming workload. Is that true? Now let's see we are being thrown with 50 sensor reading per second so now you can only imagine that once you are receiving such a huge load of data per second then you have to process the data also as and when it is coming to you thus it is an example of a streaming workload so this statement is also true moving on to the third statement a home electricity meter that sends reading once a day to an energy provider example is an example of a streaming workload. Now pay attention again that we are sending data once a day, right? So we have lot of reading throughout the day. However, we only send it once per day. Thus, it is an example of a batch workload. It's not an example of streaming workload. Thus, this statement is uh, no. Let's move on to our question number 76. So now let's jump to our next question, question number 76. In this question, you are given some of the services on the left hand side like cognitive, data catalog, data factory or Azure Synapse. And then here you are given a flow, right? So pay very good attention here. So the flow starts with logs structures data and other data structures what does that actually mean so this is your data source okay so you have a lot of different type of data here and you want to process this data the first step towards processing data is ingesting the data so you have to tell what should come here which should serve as ingestion of data moving on we have store so we store the data in Azure Data Lake. This is already given. Then we pre-process and model the data, right? So some service that help us in data warehousing. Then we have Colab, which is online analytic processing, which is already given as Azure Analysis Services. And then finally, we have reporting flow. So finally, whatever data we have ingested, stored and done analytics, and then we report the data using Power BI. So now let's, so now come, let's back come back to, to ingestion. ingestion. So we so ingest we... data, which means that either we are doing ETL or ELT process. We have discussed this in our data factory uh, video in which I told you that data factory, Azure data factory helps you do either ETL or ELT. Thus, the activity that should come here is Azure data factory. Okay, moving on. Now we have ingested the data. We have stored the data in our data lake storage. And then we have to pre-process and model the data. When we do or when we talk about modeling of data, then you should also understand that modeling of data is associated with the data warehouse. Thus, something that relates to data warehouse should come here. And that is Azure Synapse Analytics. So now this fulfills our entire flow. I hope you understand the logic behind choosing Azure Data Factory here for the ingest activity and why we chose Azure Synapse Analytics for pre-process and model. Just to give you a more pro tip, because we have OLAP, which means online analytics, thus Azure Synapse Analytics is the best suited activity here. Moving on with our question number 77. In our question number 77, we are presented with some of the tools on the left hand side. 
and we have given some hints or you can say some statements reading which we have to match these tools to these statements so now let's read one by one each statement the first statement says a graphical tool for managing sql server or azure sql database that supports access configuration management and administration tasks now the best suited tool for this is ssms or microsoft sql server management studio so this is our first answer then moving on to the second one we have a lightweight source code editor with an ms sql extension that supports connection to sql server and a rich editing experience for tsql the best tool for this one is microsoft visual studio code it's a very famous tool both these tools i almost use on my daily life then moving on we have a lightweight editor that can run on demand sql queries and view and save results as text json or microsoft excel file so the tool which is related to this one is microsoft data studio now let's move to our fourth statement it says a development tool for building azure sql database microsoft sql server relationship database sql server analysis services sses data models sql server integration services ssis packages and sql server reporting services ssrs reports so the last option for this one is microsoft sql server data tool or ssdt let's come to our question number 78 it talks about streaming workload and we have to tell the scenario about it the first statement says sending transactions that are older than a month to an archive this is not a streaming workload because we are sending data older than a month to an archive so we are processing bulk data for a month this definitely is a batch processing the second statement says sending transaction daily from point of sale devices then in this case also we are sending data once in a day thus we are not doing streaming we are doing batch processing the third says sending telemetry data from edge devices now whenever you see telemetry data or online data then you should make a connect that we are now talking about streaming workload so these keywords are important for you to keep in mind so this is an example of streaming data let's look at the last option which is sending cloud infrastructure metadata every 30 minutes here also we are doing batch processing because we are processing the data for every 30 minutes so the only correct answer in these statements are sending telemetry data from edge devices let's move on to question number 79 in question number 79 we are given a sentence and we have to complete it so the sentence says that you can query a graph database in azure cosmos db and the statements are as a json document by using sql like language as a partition row store by using cassandra query language as a partition row store by using language integrated query or as nodes and edges by using gremlin language so the correct answer for this uh, statement is as nodes and edges by using gremlin language let me take you to the microsoft azure side to prove this answer now here we are on the microsoft side you can see that we are presented with this beautiful diagram which shows us a graph database so in the graph database you can see these are called vertices right this this robin thomas football ben or android london these are vertices so vertices are like objects okay and then now if we see robin we see that robin uses mobile okay or robin knows thomas right so what are these these are called edges so edges are like relationship between vertices so keep that in mind whenever we are talking about the graph database if you come a little above in the on the same page 
then you will see a lot of uh, definitions of vertices and edges we were talking about these that edges are like relationship and vertices are like entities or objects scroll up a little more and then you can see we are talking about gremlin api and then little more and then you can see that we are now talking about azure cosmos db and gremlin api so those were the keywords cosmos db and gremlin api in our question also thus proving that this answer is correct now let's look at question number 80 which is the last question for our part 7 our question number 80 gives us some of the services on the left hand side and we have to match these services in these activities so you can see we have an activity that says extract transform and load and the last activity is data warehouse we have talked about these kind of questions in our question number 76 also we have seen these kind of question in question number 76 also so let's see what are the services that we can fit here starting with this we have sql server we have sap hana and then we have azure cosmos db what are we doing here we are doing etl process so we are extracting transform and loading the data and we have discussed this many times whenever etl or elt comes then you always think of azure data factory okay moving on we have data warehouse data warehouse is whenever explicit data warehouse word is given then you can very safely go for azure synapse analytics in fact previously it was also known as azure sql database so you so there is no confusion about this option here i hope you enjoyed part 7 in part 7 we discuss question around columnar data store where to use them and what are the keywords that you should look for in a question when using columnar data store as an answer we also discussed about batch workloads and streaming workloads what are the differences and which is to be used with what kind of statement then we looked at oltp and olap what are the differences and what are the characteristics of both of them we also discussed about azure data factory and azure cnaps and then at the last we also discussed azure cosmos db and graph db i hope you learned a lot of interesting questions in this episode if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.